Hey viewers, welcome to another game of Schedule Pro Gamer. Today we are doing a just under Grandmaster game with uh, Runamok as our Terran in the top left and uh, Sworn as our Zerk in the bottom right corner. So um, yeah, the just under Grandmaster is because this guy is actually Grandmaster level, this guy is just under Grandmaster level, so they're pretty well matched. Uh, it is a ladder game obviously and um, yeah, we'll have to see how that works out. Um, anything to add? Yeah, I guess I would like to say that um, while I'm doing this and not some really high level game because currently this is all I have. So um, yeah, if you have for me some replays that are actually over, well, patch 3.0 or after patch 3.0 because uh, yeah, everything under it I can't cast anymore because they won't run on 3.0 so um, yeah that's very unfortunate and that means that we'll have to work with what we have for the moment and since I have no connections in the high uh, well high tier Starcraft community I have no clue where to get these replays so I'm just going to have to do with the replay sites and this was all that was available so it might actually be a good game I really don't know uh, at least when your grandma Grandmaster level, you should be able to um, to macro decently and understand the build orders and things like that. So we are going to see a fast expand here before a spawning pool. So that is actually great. And we saw the barracks coming up here, the early gas, which might mean just a reaper. It might mean something else but we'll just have to see I mean normally this would be the timer for a Reaper because he's going to have around 50 gas and well not even walling off his base he could have walled off his base easily but he has nothing to hide I guess although it would be nice to um, well to not have this Reaper be spoiled he was a little bit late on the refinery like a few seconds but it's um, yeah it's all good and uh, yeah, a little bit of a fight going on here. Overlord is coming to take a look as well. It is going to see that there is no Marine coming out, but rather a Reaper. But he already knew that because he saw the gas. So yeah, no real surprise there. Which means the Overlord can hang around a little bit longer because, well, Reapers can't shoot air. Anyhow, um, the Reaper is obviously going to uh, run towards the enemy base at some point. It's going to hunt for the drone first. The drone, however, is um, back home. Yeah, well, I guess. Or died. I don't actually know. I don't know where it went. It doesn't really matter. I mean, the one drone is not going to make the difference. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it, it's not going to make the difference. It's nice to have it back home because it does um, provide you with quite a bit of minerals over time. But yeah, you could have just bought another one, built another one, or evolved, or whatever you want to call that. Anyhow, we do have the Reaper coming in, let's see what it actually can do. Um, yeah, it has zero kills for the moment, so that's excellent. Um, yeah, it's going to micro very well against these Zerklings. And um, yeah, now the Queen is out, it's not going to do anything else. So two Zerklings for a Reaper. Yeah, that is not a good trade for the for our Terran player here, because he um, he used all that gas and minerals and didn't really get anything out of it. So he's going to try to snipe a few of the uh, the well the drones preferably. He gets one drone and that immediately makes it worth it. However, he loses his Reaper, making it not so worth it. I guess it's an equal trade now, but yeah, uh, that was definitely not what he wanted. So uh, I don't know why there's a building flying over here. Does he want to land this here? It seems he does. So uh, yeah, we're going for Hellions. Uh, I thought it might be uh, Widow Mines, because Widow Mines might actually be a good plan at this point. Um, yeah, so a little bit of micro for the early game there with the, the Reaper, but no real things came of it. I mean, losing one drone. Not that big a deal. Uh, he would have lost the scouting drone anyway. And now we lost another drone. Uh, no longer really mining any gas. That is quite surprising because normally we see a lot of gas being mined. And um, not so much anything else. He did switch, by the way, to Widow Mines. So yeah, Widow Mines are pretty good against Zerglings. Well, not pretty good. They're actually 
very good against Zerklings. Because if you land one shot on a group of Zerklings, they will all die. The splash damage is enough to kill all of them. And assuming they're all in range, they will all die. But yeah, most of the time you will get like four or five. And of course, without um, detection, without early detection, you can't even kill the Widow Mine. Um, yeah, Speedling coming in. He did wall off his base in time this time. And we are going to see where this drop ends up. I'm assuming this is uh, the Widow Mines. Yeah, two of the Widow Mines and a few Marines. And he will, of course, deal with this uh, one Zerkling that was in his base. No, no problem. I mean, <laughs> yeah. It's not that kind of a level. Anyhow, we are going to see the Widow Mines. And, of course, there is no detection yet. Although the uh, Zerk does get pretty decent detection. And should not have any trouble with this. Uh, he might actually, well, be in some trouble at least. Because, well, he doesn't have an overseer yet. Uh, he can easily morph those, uh, or, well, morph those, yeah. Get one. And this might actually be very painful if he doesn't... I don't know why he didn't just transform this one. Did he not see that there was still a Widow Mine in his base? This is going to get so many kills. But oh, there's another one over here even. Eight kills here. Oh my god, ten kills. Well, he had some um, some some zircling kills as well. But that was just that was just insane. Just 18 kills. I don't know how many of those were drones, but now I do. 19 workers killed. That is just insane. And here it's all mining pretty nicely. We might actually be able to get some more. Yeah, well, they do get um, get taken out now, but yeah, the economic damage should have been, or it should be enough. Yeah, at this point, I don't think the Zerg player can actually come back from for, from this because it was such an effective harass, and he didn't really lose a whole lot. I mean, yeah, he lost his widow mines, but well, that's about it. And he does need to have something on the front lines, though. A little bit of repairing going on. Um, not actually sure why he was so late on sending his marines here. There was nothing in the uh, in the base, so he's expecting some kind of air unit to come out. I'm assuming he's right. Yeah, there you go. He has the Mutalisks out now. Uh, the Mutalisks are really just a punishing unit for if you don't have enough defense. And we'll have to see if that actually works out for him. But the Viking, yeah, is good against the Mutalisk because it does way more damage to air units than the Mutalisk does. And if you can get a couple out, then yeah, you can take out a whole pack of these Mutalisks. And of course, the Mutalisks are going to run into the dropships. Sorry, Mad Effects. So uh, not too big of a deal because, well, Marines are excellent against Mutalists, especially with Medifax. And we're going to walk the rest of the way. That is fine. Stim pack, or Stim rather, going off, trying to pick off a couple of drones and then going straight for the base. The Queen almost goes down, but, well, he doesn't manage to actually pick her off. Um, yeah, for the rest, this might actually not be a good drop. Well, it's not a technically a drop because he just walked in here. But, um, yeah, <laughs> that did not work out as well as it could have. The queen should have died there. That, there's no doubt there. Uh, also, he kind of focus fires the hatchery for a moment, which means that the 300 damage he did there could have gone to uh, drones or something like that. He could have picked up a few drones and instead he, um, yeah, he kind of wasted some damage because unless you take out a building, all the damage on it is wasted, especially with Zerg. With Terran, at least you get, you do some economic damage. And with, uh, with Protoss, of course, if you take down the shield, it does absolutely nothing. If you take down some of the HP, at least that's permanent, but yeah, still it's not really worth it. Anyhow, finally we have the Mulus coming in, and um, they are going to harass in this little corner. He did find this little corner and might actually pick up a drone or two before having to retreat. Uh, yeah, he's going to lose a Mutalist. No, it actually survived. Wow. 
Yeah, so <laughs> very lucky there because that last shot could have easily killed it. But yeah, it just enough, just enough HP. It's all good. And I guess that was kind of strange. Um, yeah, just a couple of Zerklings here harassing. There is nobody to defend. It seems that he uh, pulled his entire army to the front and doesn't have any army left. I don't know what he's trying to do here. The, our Zerg player here is uh, or was behind pretty far and then gets to come back into this game because of the sloppy play of our Terran player. And yeah, just more and more stuff going on. Just picking off everything that he can find with those Mutalists. As I said, the Mutalists are really a unit that punishes you for not having an army, not having enough defense. They're very quick. They do reasonable damage. They're not great. Uh, I mean, yeah, 9 damage. And yes, they do bounce a little bit and things like that. But most of the time, they get picked off pretty easily by, uh, by bigger armies or by decent armies. And in this case, not so much. So uh, didn't really get anything done with uh, or against these mutilists, but he still has a decent economy. Economy, so I'm not counting him out yet. Is there? Yeah, there's an SCV in the middle of this. Oh, multiples even. Okay, sure. So definitely not uh, the Grandmaster class that I expected from this player. Obviously, Grandmaster also has its ranks. Like you don't have to be. Uh, world-class player to be Grandmaster, you just have to be good. Well, you have to be excellent at the game, but not perfect. And I always expect perfect. When I see Grandmaster, I always expect people to be perfect and to just have the game down. So understand every uh, thing about, well, things like, I don't know, macro, micro, build orders. And yeah, you can still make mistakes. I mean, even the greats make mistakes. That's, uh, that's what makes this game great. Uh, if everyone played perfectly, the games would be over as soon as we saw which races they were and which, well, especially which units composition they go for. Um, yeah, the Widow Ones are going to do some damage here because every time he flies over them, he's going to lose some units and that is going to be very painful. Uh, the Banelings not really efficient, and that means, well, we actually can pick off the Mutalisk here with the with the Marines. I don't know if there are Marines left, no, just Marauders. So, uh, oh, some Marines coming in now. They're not going to do a whole lot, though. I mean, yeah, what are they going to do? The Medivacs all get picked off, and yeah, that was basically it. There is still a Widowman here, oh, three of them still alive. So he might want to watch out with those mutilists because, well, kind of painful to uh, to lose those. But he does know that they're there. He's going to uh, spread out some zerklings just to stall. And once an overseer comes over, he's going to be able to pick them off. There you go. One. Okay, that landed right in the mutilists. So, but he does pick off all three without losing anything too important. Um, meanwhile, we do have a new army forming here. Not a big army. He, uh, in my opinion, is producing too many medifacts for what he has. And now he has a Thor. Even though Thor is not that efficient in this kind of an army, you need to protect it. Yes, it does a lot of damage, but you need to protect it from actually doing its... Uh, or getting picked off by... Um, well, mutilists or zerglings or whatever. Oh, full medevac! Oh, that is so painful. And yes, now he's going to concentrate on this while the rest of the army is over here. And these are enough zerglings and now banelings to actually pick off the entire base that is here. Because, well, he may have a nice row of uh, supply depots here set up. They're not going to be super effective because, well, the Banelings will instantly get through them. And are we going to see them? I think he sees them. Let's, uh, let's actually see. Yeah, he does see them. And uh, is he going to pick off all of these Marines? The Marines doing their thing kind of decent. I mean, 
Yeah, he took a lot of damage, but most of it was on units that um, that could take the damage. So the Marauders took some damage, the Widow Mines took some damage. But not too big of a deal. I don't know where the Mutalisk went. I, I didn't keep track of them, so they may have picked off some, uh, some units while I wasn't looking. But it seems that this base is still reasonably mining. This one's still good, and this one's also still good. Um... Yeah, he needs another base uh, shortly, because, well, just like the Zerg player, he's kind of mining out his main, and you want to have a base to replace that. So, anyhow, let's uh, let's see what this uh, is going to do. I'm not going to keep track of the bases too much, because, well, so much to, ke to keep track of that uh, I don't think that the bases are going to be our main issue here. Um... Yeah, one of the Overseers gets picked off, the second one might actually go down as well, but, uh, which would mean, but it's not going to, but which would mean that he has no detection for a little bit, but yeah, there are no Widow Mines uh, anymore because, well, they all got picked off. So yeah, this was pretty much a victory here for our Zerg player, who, uh, as I said, was going to pick up the Thor. That's, I, I completely predicted that, because with... Uh, a small army like that, if you lose the fight, then yeah, the Thor is not going to really be able to do a whole lot. Grouped up Mutalis, however, yeah, that is what you don't want to do with a Thor. And he is going to just splash on all of them and do a whole lot of damage. But once again, well, once he's alone, he can't really deal with it. So a new... Um, uh, base did come up, but he's not going to be able to do anything with it because the base is just going to be picked off. And yeah, by now, by the way, uh, the, the big advantage that he had in the beginning is completely annihilated. And just complete zeroed out. Because, well, with four bases up, he can obviously just replace the drones that he lost in the beginning. And yeah, that gives an early advantage to our ter Terran player, but he didn't really do anything with it. And because of that, well, now it's equal. I guess the, the armies are even kind of equal. And we're going to have to see if he can, uh, or which player can actually come out ahead here. So some Widow Mines going down, but there are plenty of Overseers on the map. So assuming that he keeps them with his Mutalist, and as you can see, the speed is equal, so there is no reason not to. Um, yeah, he should be able to pick those off. Why didn't this fire? Oh, they weren't in range yet. They were still, like, right here. If he burrowed that over there, he might have actually gotten the shot off. But that's, that's the gamble, I guess. So, in the meantime, we have a little bit of a fight over here. Zirkling's so good at just going all over the place trying to, uh, to find this little gap in your defenses. Because they're cheap, and wow, he even has a sensor tower. But uh, they're cheap, they're really easy to um, to produce, because, well, it's like 50 minerals, and then you have two. And you can just make a, a small group of them, and just go ahead and, well, do your thing with them. Yeah, of course, the matter gets picked off, so picking up the units was not really that effective. Um, good combination here from the Zerg in, in unit-wise, because he is kind of combining all of the good units, uh, so the cheap units with the expensive units, and flying around with his Mutalist just to do his uh, his thing there. He's going to pick off yeah, this uh, missile turret without losing a Mutalist. And yeah, the Overseers even scouting around for Widow Mines, not really getting a whole lot here yet, but he might actually be able to uh, to do some damage here, but no, 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 he's staying too stationary, and yeah, just gets everyone picked off. That was, that was really bad. So even though he has the combination of the cheap Zerklings with the uh, expensive Mutalists, he just lost all of his expensive Mutalists, so now he's going to have to produce them again, but I guess he has plenty of gas at least. We'll have to see if he can actually manage to do so. Um, yeah, he has a little bit too much gas in fact, because, well, if he could transfer that into his mineral bank, 
I think he would do that. And that is not something we see from Zerg players a lot. Now he just has the, the Zerglings out. I don't know if he has more Mutalists coming out. Um, Ultralists are underway. But Ultralists, yeah, they take a while to produce. As well as, of course, he needs a lot of minerals to get those going. And he needs to defend this base. Because if he doesn't defend this base, this is going to be terrible. But for now, he is defending. There is a, a spine crawler here that is going to pick off at least a few units, but they're not super effective against this kind of a, a team. Because, well, with Stimpak and Medifax, yeah, they die instantly and they can't really kill anything. It's hard to, uh, to defend against that. Yeah, by now, because the, the, the Zerg player suicided in all of his Mutalists, for really no gain at all, except for two missile turrets, which don't matter at all. Um, he's going to lose a base, and now the Terran player is pretty far ahead. So we're going to have to see if um, if the Zerg player has, well, a little more to say about this. I don't know if there are, yeah, there are Ultralists in production, three of them. And that means that, um, well, at least the Marines are in a little bit of trouble, but Marauders are still so good against Ultralis. Here, they do um, double damage versus Armored, and Mutalists, of course, are the ultimate Armored unit. And, yeah, they can't really defend against that at all. So, unless you have a combination of units that actually allow you to get through the Marauders and the Marines, you're going to be in trouble, because even if you pick off some of the marines, like, uh, yeah, as you can see, the marines are in trouble, but then, yeah, he meets the marauders and instantly goes down. So, yeah, um, definitely a more interesting game than what we normally see, because normally we see this uh, very stylized play with, um, with, like, two or three types of units, and here it was just a melee of everything that they could find, and especially this Terra player made some really big play mistakes, and really didn't pressure early game, um, yeah, didn't have, well, didn't have any support for his Thors, so he had Thors, but they didn't really do anything, and then the Zerg made the biggest mistake of all by attacking here without getting anything out of it. And you can see where his damage went. It went all over the place. All of the buildings are damaged a little bit. Like he even damaged his refinery and this refinery. Even though there are no harvesters on it, there's not even a base here. So unless you're picking off a building, just don't attack it. But yeah, this was the main part of the main, well, turning point of the game. I think the Zerg player could have won this. And then he went for Ultralis, but that was kind of a yeah, desperate move. He has so much gas, but no minerals at all. Just a completely desperate move. Anyway, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. GG!